Today we are going to talk about a short history of atoms. In order to make this as easy as possible, I am going to compare atoms to people. People have names. If you go to our school, you know there's Miss Talbot, Mr. Cam, Miss Henry, Mr. Smith. Just like people have names, atoms have names too, like hydrogen, oxygen, aluminum, and gold. Just like people have different names, atoms have different names, the different names of atoms are called elements. It's very exciting. And just like people have different characteristics, like some people are tall, some people are short, you know, some people drive fast cars, some people drive slow cars, people have different characteristics. Just like people have different characteristics, atoms have different characteristics as well. Some, some atoms have many electrons, and some atoms have just a few electrons. Just like people have different characteristics, elements have different amounts of electrons. That's how we can tell the difference between something like hydrogen and something like oxygen, something like uh, sodium or chloride. We can tell the difference between the different elements by the amount of electrons they have. There is a great guy by the name of Niels Bohr who came up with a model for the atom. In his model inside there was the nucleus, which is the very, very small thing that we talked about a long time ago like two weeks ago, like a hit, like an ancient history to you guys. But remember, the nucleus is in the center, it's very small, and around the nucleus is the electron which travels around in an energy field. Niels Bohr model looks something like this with the nucleus in the middle and the electrons flying around all the time. Similar to the way that the Earth revolves around the Sun, he thought that the atoms revolved around the nucleus. There have been many other models, we're not going to talk about all of them because I don't want to bore you to death, but uh, there, there are different models. So far, so we have the atom, the nucleus, the electrons, the energy fields. The question though is, is how do these atoms interact with each other? I'm glad you asked. Let's take hydrogen, for instance. Maybe hydrogen's getting lonely. It's, it's walking around school. There's no, there's no other hydrogen uh, people that he wants to hang out with. He feels like he uh, needs a friend. So he goes, he makes a hydrogen friend. When they get together like that, hydrogen gets together, they create a bond. A bond is similar to a friendship. When you have a friend, you guys hang out together. You go to the movies. You see Avengers. You see The Dark Knight Rises, whatever it is that you want to see. And maybe you need a third friend, so you bring in oxygen. When you have all these things together, you make water. Yay, water. A compound is more than one element bonded together. A compound is more than one element bonded together. So if you remember, the element is the individual atom. So we have the hydrogen and the oxygen. Each of those individual atoms, the name of those atoms is the element. And when they are bonded together like they are here, they become a compound. Now, there are many different kinds of bonds. Ionic bonds occur between something called a positive ion and a negative ion. So for instance, we have sodium, which is represented by the letters Na, because for some reason, they, sodium is too long of a word to write, so, and scientists are lazy, so they just use two letters. And they make it a plus. Now, every plus needs a minus, and they attract, they're attracted to each other. So in this case, sodium is attracted to chloride. So when they are together, opposites attract. So just like that classic idea that opposites attract, you know, the, the, the good guy goes for the bad girl, the bad girl goes for the good guy, uh, the uh, quiet boy goes for the loud girl, the loud girl goes for the quiet guy. The, the positive ions and the negative ions, they interact together, and they like to form bonds, friendships whatever you want to call it. And when sodium and chloride come together, they create that thing that you love so much that you put in all your food, even though it might kill you, called salt. Very good. The other kind of bond is the covalent bond. That is, let's see, covalent. That's three syllables. Covalent bonds occur when atoms share electrons. So instead of being attracted to each other because they're positive and negative, in this case, they share the electrons. So they're not overlapping. I, I did that on purpose to show you that they're sharing the electrons. And just like when you have co-captains, covalent means that they are sharing. Because co-captains, if you have co-captains, that means that they're, neither one of them is the only captain. They're, they're sharing the responsibility. In the same way, covalent bonds occur when things are shared. And if you have a covalent bond, that's known as a molecule because a molecule is held together by two covalent bonds. 
So if, if you have two covalent bonds holding things together, it's a molecule. If, if it's an ion, like a positive and a negative, it can't be a molecule because a molecule can only be made by covalent bonds. And that's pretty much all we're going over today.